Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn about urea cycle and related disorders. The urea cycle takes place in the liver to detoxify ammonia. This ammonia is an end product of protein metabolism. It's water insoluble and toxic compound, so it cannot be excreted from the body directly. So to remove this ammonia from our body, it undergoes in the urea cycle and at the end of urea cycle we get urea that is water soluble and non-toxic compound and being water soluble it can be easily excreted in urine so let's see from first starting before this urea cycle from where this ammonia comes so whenever we take any protein in diet that will be digested to the amino acid molecules and it will be absorbed in the form of amino acid this amino acid will be transported to the body tissues and it will be utilized for the metabolism when this amino acid utilized the first step for the amino acid utilization is removal of amino group from an amino acid this is done by the transamination reaction now let's see what is transamination reaction transamination is removal of amino group or the transfer of amino group from an amino acid to a keto acid resulting in formation of formation of new amino acid and new keto acid here you can see in this reaction the amino group of an amino acid transferred to a keto acid here it is alpha ketoglutaric acid and amino acid get itself converted to keto acid and this amino acid uh, sorry the keto acid alpha ketoglutaric acid get converted to so glutamic acid this transamination reaction required pyridoxal phosphate as a coenzyme once this glutamic acid forms in the any tissues of body that will be transported to the liver by trapping this amino group of an any amino acid and in the liver, it undergoes the process of oxidative deamination with the help of glutamate dehydrogenase. Okay, so this, uh, by this process, this L-glutamic acid removes its amino group and get converted into L-ketoglutaric acid, alpha-ketoglutaric acid, and this ammonia will be released to the liver or transported to the liver in this manner from all the tissues the same way this amino group also the ammonia also present in the brain that will be taken up by the glutamic acid and it forms a glutamine with the help of glutamine synthetase this glutamine will transport it to the liver and the enzyme glutaminase present in the liver will remove this amino group from the glutamine and convert it to the glutamic acid. So by this way, the ammonia from the brain will be transported to the liver. And this L-glutamic acid, as we have seen, is undergoes oxidative deamination and it releases the ammonia to the liver. Now we have understand from where this ammonia comes to the liver. Now we we'll go through the process of urea cycle that convert this toxic ammonia to the urea. This urea cycle that is the first metabolic pathways to be discovered by the Hans Krebs and Kurt Henslet in 1932. Because of this it is also known as Krebs Henslet cycle. In the urea cycle the first intermediate of this pathway is ornithine that's why it is also known as ornithine cycle. So, urea cycle is also known as Krebs and Slut cycle or as an ornithine cycle. In the structure of urea, there are two nitrogen, and that comes from the different sources. One nitrogen comes from the ammonia, and the second nitrogen comes from the alpha amino group of aspartic acid that you will see in the urea cycle pathway. This urea cycle takes place in the liver. And the enzymes from this pathway 
is partly present in the mitochondria and partly in the cytoplasm. So this urea cycle, a few steps occurs in the mitochondria and a few steps occurs in the cytoplasm. So this is urea cycle started with the ammonia and when it goes through the different different steps, five steps, and it forms the urea. As I told you, the partly occurs in the mitochondria, partly in the cytoplasm. The first and the second reaction take place in the mitochondria. In the remaining third, fourth, and fifth step occurs in the cytoplasm. We'll see all the reactions one by one. The first step of the urea cycle is formation of carbomyl phosphate. This reaction occurs in the cytoplasm, sorry, occurs in the mitochondria. The first reaction occurs in the mitochondria with the help of carbomyl phosphate synthetase 1 enzyme. It converts this carbon dioxide and ammonia to the carbomyl phosphate in the presence of energy. This carbomyl phosphate ATP, carbomyl phosphate synthetase 1 is a rate limiting enzyme of this pathway and utilizes the 2 ATP to convert this ammonia and carbon dioxide to carbamyl phosphate. It requires magnesium as a coenzyme. So in this reaction, two high energy phosphate bonds are utilized. And the second step that is formation of citrulline. The second step also takes place in the mitochondria in which the carbamyl phosphate synthesized at the first step will react with the ornithine that comes from the cytoplasm in the presence of ornithine transcarbamylase enzyme that get converted into citrulline. Now the, the enzyme of third step is if absent the citrulline will be accumulated in blood and that will lead to citrullinemia. The citrulline is present in the milk. So whenever there is a patient suffering from citrullinemia in this patient in that patient the milk has to be avoided. The citrulline moves at the end of the second step, citrulline will move to the cytoplasm for further reaction. In the third step, there is a formation of arginino-succinate or the arginino-succinic acid. This reaction occurs in the cytoplasm. The citrulline comes from the mitochondria to cytoplasm to react with the aspartic acid. In the presence of arginino succinate synthetase enzyme, and this arginino succinate synthetase enzyme convert this to the arginino succinic acid. This reaction utilizes two high energy phosphate bonds. So the ATP will get converted into AMP that is adenosine monophosphate. And here the aspartic acid, the amino group of aspartic acid provide second nitrogen atom of urea. Step 4 that is formation of arginine that reaction also occurs in the cytoplasm. This arginino succinic acid will be acted upon by lyase group of enzyme that is arginino succinase and split it to the arginine and fumarate. This fumarate produced in this step will be channeled to the TCS cycle. So this fumarate act as a link between urea cycle and TCS cycle. The another significance of this step is that it provides arginine and it becomes a semi uh, sorry the semi essential or non essential amino acid. Formation of urea that is the final stage of urea cycle that also occurs in the cytoplasm with the help of arginase enzyme. This arginine will split to the urea and ornithine with the help of arginase this enzyme mostly present in the liver that's why the urea cycle occurs only in the liver and we get urea at the end of this first step ornithine that produces will again enter into the mitochondria to react with another molecule of carbamyl phosphate and the urea cycle continues so this ornithine we can say it's a catalyst for the urea cycle. So at the end of process, we get urea from the ammonia. Now we'll see the how this urea cycle is linked with the TCS cycle. 
so we have seen that in the at the end of in the, in the process of step four this arginine no succinate will split to the arginine and fumarate and this fumarate will channeled to the tca cycle and get converted into malate and oxaloacetate so by this process this urea cycle and the tca cycle linked together that's why sometimes urea cycle is also known as urea bicycle energetics of urea cycle the first step the carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1 utilizes the 2 atp the third step uh, arginino succinate synthetase utilize the two high energy phosphate bonds so the total four atps are utilized the fumarate form in the fourth step from the lysis of arginino succinate that get to the tca cycle and convert it to malate malate will oxidize to oxaloacetate and forms one nadh that is equivalent to three atp so in the process total net energy expenditure is about only of one atp so we utilize only one atp for the production of one urea molecule talk about the regulation so the enzyme of urea cycle regulated by the protein content of diet if you take more protein in the diet so the urea cycle occurs more or uh, faster way uh, increase activity of urea cycles enzyme found during starvation because to cope up with the uh, protein catabolism occurs during the starvation and acetyl glutamate that is allosteric activator of rate limiting enzyme of this pathway that is carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1 so it increases the activity of this enzyme but the mechanism is yet not clear so this is all about urea cycle we have seen the how ammonia is converted to urea we have seen the energetic of this pathway that one atp is utilized for the production of one urea molecule and along with that the regulation of urea cycle now we through the we will go through the disorders of urea cycle this is usually inherited disorders of urea cycle because of due to deficiency of any of the enzyme of this pathway so whenever there is an enzyme is absent in any pathway there is accumulation of <coughs> there is an accumulation of um, particular substrate of that enzyme okay so we'll see one by one the first disorder of urea cycle is hyper ammonemia type 1 the name itself suggests hyper ammonia increase ammonia level in the blood due to deficiency of first enzyme of this pathway that is carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1 because of the absence of this enzyme the ammonia will not be taken up by the uh, uh, sorry will not be utilized in the urea cycle so there will be high level of ammonia in the blood and ammonia is being toxic it causes mental retardation and it is an autosomal recessive disorder the second disorder is hyperammonemia type 2 it is due to deficiency of ornithin transcarbamylase enzyme this enzyme is this disorder is usually inherited as x linked trait this enzyme deficiency leads to high level of ammonia in blood and this ammonia will be taken up by the glutamic acid so it get increases level of glutamine in the blood csf and urine due to deficiency of this enzyme the carbamyl phosphate forms at the end of first step will be channeled to pyrimidine nucleotide synthesis and there is an increased production of orotic acid in that pathway and that leads to orotic aciduria third disorder is hyperornithinemia this ornithine from the cytoplasm transported to the mitochondria with the help of ornithine transporter protein and defect in that transporter leads to hyperornithinemia it is an autosomal recessive disorder and resulting in increased level of ammonia and ornithine in blood and decreased urea level in the blood 
Fourth disorder is citrullinemia. That is due to deficiency of arginine succinate synthetase enzyme of urea cycle. It is an autosomal recessive disorder and because of this there is increased level of ammonia and citrulline in the blood leads to citrullinuria. So as I told you in the beginning milk is a source of citrulline. So milk has to be avoided in the patient of citrullinemia. The next disorder is arginino-succinic aciduria. It is due to deficiency of arginino-succinate lyse enzyme. This arginino-succinate because of this will be accumulated in the blood and urine and this disorder is associated with the febrile brittle tough hair. Hyperarginemia it is due to deficiency of the last enzyme of urea cycle that is arginase and because of this there is an increased level of arginine in the blood and CSF and instead of arginine the cysteine and the lysine are lost in the urine in these disorders. So this is all about disorders related to the urea cycle. Thank you so much. I hope all of you understand about urea cycle, the process, the energetics regulations and the disorder associated with the urea cycle. So please kindly like, share and subscribe our channel that is Biochemistry for Student. You can follow the Insta account for the more update that is same as at the rate Biochemistry for Student. There is a link of Telegram channel in the description. You can subscribe it for the uh, biochemistry related MCQs and other literatures. Thank you. Thank you so much.